Hello, everybody. I am uh, meteorologist Hutch Johnson joining you, and I got to tell you, we've had some gray and soupy weather here. We got a big winter weather event heading as we uh, head into the Christmas holiday. I wanted to show you on Hutch's weather deck here a little bit about what we're contending with, at least right now. Now, this morning, soupy and foggy across a good portion of the Central Plains. Uh, what causes that fog and why does it form? And up here, we had freezing fog. And some of you said, Hutch, what's the difference between fog and freezing fog? and I've got just the thing to show you. Number one, fog and clouds, as a matter of fact, are pretty simple to understand how they work. We have a temperature that we measure of the air, and it's been mild here this winter season in Fargo, North Dakota. Now, as we take a look at other measurements we do, we measure the dew point temperature, and it's simply a temperature, and the dew point temperature is always equal to or lower than the air temperature. So here's our air temperature, 40, and let's say our dew point is 37. That means we have to cool the air temperature down to 37 degrees for the air to be saturated. Boom, voila, you make a cloud. It's that simple. There's two ways to make clouds in the atmosphere. We can cool the air temperature down to the dew point temperature, or we can raise the dew point temperature up to the temperature of the air by evaporating water into the air. Now, fog versus freezing fog. Fog, little cloud droplets that form in the atmosphere. They can form wetness or dew on things like your car windshield. Here in Fargo, temperatures were above freezing all day. Notice my deck kind of wet. That's because the moisture in the air and the fog condensed on the deck and it made it look like it rained all night when, as a matter of fact, it was just dew forming on a thick style on the deck and on my car's windshield. In areas of northern North Dakota where your temperatures were below freezing, we had that risk of freezing fog. Now, that's fog that freezes on impact when it hits something that has a cold surface. So, with your car's antenna, for instance, maybe that is outside and below freezing. And if it is, if you're driving through fog, that fog can form on your, uh, or freeze on your car's antenna. Something good to know. To show you the difference between that, I got a couple of fun experiments for you. I had to freeze something in the freezer. This is a bucket of frozen dog food for my buddy Pedro, right? And this is a water squirter. So if we have water in the air squirting around and actually just fog droplets that are in the air and those fog droplets land on something above freezing like my deck, the deck gets sprinkled with water, okay? But if there's something frozen where the surface's temperature is below freezing, we could spray that and guess what? It freezes on impact. And in fact, sometimes the fog droplets are what we call super cooled. The temperature of that liquid water is below freezing. So it just needs to be agitated to freeze. So now on the skin of my basically ice chunk here, I've got little chunks of, of water droplet ice that have formed on that. And that's what freezing fog is. Now, we've got a big winter system heading out of Colorado, one of Hutch's favorite places. Go Mile High, Bronco, Denver, Mile High Salute. I hope we can win a couple more games. At any rate, Colorado Low is going to swing out. It's heading our way here in the valley. Now, for my neighbors in South Dakota, hey, South Dakota, it's a shout out to you. You have a chance at seeing some very significant impacts, as will Nebraska. And here in parts of eastern North Dakota, we have a chance at seeing some impacts as well. But we're talking rain. We're talking sleet. We're talking freezing rain. And we're also talking about a chance of snow. And Colorado lows are one of the most prolific moisture producers as far as rainfall goes in the summer months and snow here in the northern plains in the winter months. Uh, we need to get that Gulf of Mexico moisture all the way up here into Minnesota and North Dakota before we really have a chance at seeing some significant snowfall systems typically or even very wet rain systems up here. So to explain a little bit about this whole process in the water cycle and how we forecast the difference between rain, sleet, and snow. I've got another experiment for you. What? Oh yeah, no charge. Okay, check this out. I was uh, cooking. I just got this new recipe for boiled water. It's easier than it sounds. Okay, at any rate, here it is. This is hot water, like there is warm water in the Gulf of Mexico. So in this pan, we're gonna put and make a Gulf, a Gulf of warm water, a Gulf of Mexico. Ooh, look at all that steam. Can you see it? Okay. 
Hot, warm water evaporates very quickly in cold air, by the way. And our temperature here in Fargo is right around 40 degrees. So we've got rapidly evaporating water from Hutch's Gulf of Mexico, maybe not far from the pan handle of Texas. See what I did there, pan? Okay, at any rate, water evaporates. This moisture in the Gulf of Mexico, when we get south winds off the Gulf and it moves up towards the snow banks of North Dakota, see the snow there? Okay, all right. The evaporated water from the Gulf of Mexico blows up the Central Plains over Oklahoma, over Kansas and Nebraska and gets into the Dakotas. And as it travels northward, the ground temperature is colder and colder. And up north of us, north of Fargo, we have snow on the ground for you and Grand Forks and up near the international border. So when this moist air moves over the top of colder and colder surfaces, we're going to cool the air temperature down to the dew point of the air because the dew point of the air down in the Gulf of Mexico can be as high as the temperature of the Gulf water. So 50s, 60s, even 70s at times this time of the year. So that air that has dew points in the 60s and 70s starts traveling northward. And as it moves over cooler and cooler earth surfaces, that moisture condenses and forms fog clouds, rain, and it precipitates some of it out. By the time it gets up here in North Dakota, we'll have dew points from these air masses that come from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up into the frozen tundra that have dew points in the 30s. And that's enough to produce some pretty significant snow events here in our area. Now, when this water evaporates from the Gulf of Mexico and it works its way up into the atmosphere up high where it's cold, many of the clouds this time of the year most of the clouds this time of the year are comprised of ice crystals up where we live. Ice! Ice is solid and, well, we can have those snowflakes fall all the way down to the ground as snowflakes up here in North Dakota. That's most common this time of the year. Now, we can have ice forming over Oklahoma and as it falls, if the layer next to the ground is nice and warm, the snowflakes melt and we get rain. This Colorado low system is going to be very impressive. We're going to see temperatures that are going to be close to 50 degrees in our area at the ground. And that warm air is going to be blown by the south winds over the top of the colder air coming at us from Canada. That's going to cause lifting. It's going to cool the air. We're going to get clouds forming. And really, we're going to start seeing precipitation happening. Now, up north where it's cold, it's snow. It's easy to forecast. Where it's colder air, all the way through the depth of the atmosphere, we're gonna get snow. But we can get sleet, we can get snow pellets, and we can also get, well, freezing rain. So what's the difference? We talked about freezing fog. So let's talk about that freezing rain. For freezing rain, we really need a frozen surface. So your roads, your sidewalks, uh, your car's windshield, those can be below freezing. And if those suckers are below freezing and we get raindrops that are super cooled falling out of the clouds, so we get a snowflake up here, it melts because there's a warm layer of lifted air from the ground that's in the 50s, maybe even 60s. That melts the snowflakes into liquid drops. Those liquid drops drive down towards the ground and if the ground is frozen, the road surface frozen, your car's windshield frozen, Boom, the second it hits, we've got ice, and that is one nasty mess. And yes, it's even hard for North Dakotans and Minnesotans to drive through. But check this out. If that liquid drop snowflake melts in the warmer layer of the atmosphere by that lifted warm air from the Gulf of Mexico, okay, if that little liquid drop on the way down goes through a thick layer of cold air over the frozen tundra, there's usually a little narrow band where we have this thick layer, thick layer, that's going to freeze that clear liquid drop into an ice ball. That ice ball is transparent. You can see through it. It's like this and it's called sleet. That's what sleet is. So we get these little ice balls falling from the sky. They don't hurt. It's not like hailstones. They're tiny and you'll actually see them bounce uh, off your deck surface. We could have some sleet with this system. Exactly where the sleet falls depends on how deep that freezing layer is near the surface. Okay? If it's a shallow layer of freezing air, it doesn't have time to refreeze the raindrop. And therefore we get freezing rain if the ground is cold enough or just flat out rain. But if we do have a thicker layer of freezing air, that liquid drop will freeze into an ice ball and that can be a slippery mess as well. 
for us here in North Dakota, we're watching for a chance of some of our area to get snow. The best chance of that will be in the colder pool of air, you know, by the snowbank. So the farther north we get, the better chance there will be of snow. But we're not going to get snow all the way up to the international border with this system. And I've got a forecast on my page. You can see the latest on that. So that's a little explanation about fog, freezing fog, and how difficult it can be to really pin down the precise location of who gets snow, who gets sleet, and who gets freezing rain in a weather system like the one we are fixing to have as we head into the holiday weekend. Safe travels, no matter what. Stay up to date with the latest in the forecast for your area and give yourself some leeway, some cushion time to leave early or stay a little longer if you need to so that your travels can be safe. Meteorologist Hutch Johnson with a discussion about the weather.